Greetings and welcome to this new series of videos. I had better hopes for my other series on the 6502, but I got sidetracked. Well, that's an understatement. I started to create breadboard builds, but skipped over the whole PCB manufacturing of multiple revisions. Here's a quick recap. In the beginning, there was COVID lockdown. And then I came upon a series of videos on the 6502 by Ben Eater. I was inspired. My electronics background dates back from my college years, some 30 years ago. So I had to relearn a few things along the way. All in all, I worked on many revisions of the breadboard and PCB designs. All systems had the following core components, the 6502, 30K of RAM, 2K of non-volatile RAM, 32K of ROM, and at least one ACIA. My Rev1 PCB, compatible with the RC6502 bus and breadboard friendly, was my main system for the longest time. It had some flaws, like a reverse reset switch, inverted the clock on the ACIA, and there was no power switch. I didn't bother to solder the bus headers because I never got around to making, uh, to making expansion boards. This brings me to Rev2. This release is stacked based. The idea was to have a top board with the core components and the second board with the IOs. The third board is a TMS 9918A video based card and the fourth board is a three channel AY8910 based sound card and lastly the fifth card is simply a breadboard interface. Unfortunately it was plagued with a few little bugs at many levels. Yeah, pun intended. In comes Rev3 with a specific case in mind and by case, I mean an enclosure. This board has three ACIAs, an interrupt controller, PS2 mouse, keyboard and NES controller ports, and a breakout for an LCD module. The weird shape is to allow for switches within the enclosure. The idea was to have a multimedia daughter board, but I moved to the next board revision at this point. I got bored. <laughs> Another pun. And lastly, Rev4, my masterpiece. It's basically the same as Rev3, minus one ACIA, but with the added TMS 9918A video card chip system oh well and a quad ay3 8910 sound chip Psst. chips multiple chips anyway i managed to program some music on it like the mario theme song and treasure island but fred you might say if you've developed all this with a very good monitor program to top it off, why change to another platform? Well, it turns out that all of this lacked something important. Compatibility with something else. I mean, what software did I have aside from my wonderful monitor? I wanted games, applications, utilities. To be honest, while developing software is fun, I can't develop everything also. And in comes the Z80, or the Z80 if you're Canadian like me. This CPU has a distinct advantage of supporting CPM, and also, if I design the thing correctly, can be MSX compatible. My Rev4 is almost NSX-like, with the right graphics card and sound chips. The problem is that the CPU is a 6502, not a Z80. How am I going to pull this off? It turns out Grant Searle has a nice design to base myself on. 
and his website is loaded with practical information. I also found some good ideas from John's basement to be inspirational. But in the meantime, I wanted to learn CPM. So I acquired the Z80 MBC2 from Just For Fun. Should be coming in soon. Aside from what I had already, component-wise, I needed to purchase a few more things from Mauser. Have a look at what I got. First bag. I have RAM, static RAM. It's a 4 megabit, uh, so that means 512 uh, mega... no, megabyte, a <laughs> kilobyte uh, static RAM um, dip format. All right, then we have a crystal oscill... no, 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 it's 10 megahertz uh, SIO um, for the Z80. It's weird, normally they put the crystals in there and the chips there in the uh, those plastic uh, tubes. Huh, who knew? <clears throat> Another box. This one is the 10 megahertz PIO. Zilog microprocessor MPU, so that's what they say. What that's what it says on the box. I suppose the other box is the CPU. No, I ordered a microchip 8 bit microcontroller MCU. Um, maybe I'm going to use it in the project, I am not sure, but I have it just in case. Next item in a bag. In bubble wrap. Uh, these are USB connectors. Yeah, standard USB B type connectors. I don't like the micro and mini. Uh, I'd rather have the USB type B if I'm going to use a USB port. Ah. Now there it is, the 10 MHz CMOS CPU Zilog micropro microprocessor. Of course, it's, uh, we'll take a look at those more closely later. And I have here two uh, Econo Reset with uh, P. That's weird that they just mark it like that. But basically, it's the reset uh, circuit. It's a DS1813-5. All right, nothing else. Bag number two. All right, let's see. What did I order? Now I have a card frame for compact flash. Yes, because eventually I'd like to use a compact flash card. Maybe. Well, I'll have it. I also have the connector somewhere. I have here a MOSFET. Uh, this is model IRF3205. Uh, I believe that is a N MOSFET. I want to use a, I want to do a soft power on uh, circuit eventually and I'm going to use a MOSFET instead of a relay. Now what we have here, we have a 74HC125 quad bus uh, buffer, what's the 125 again, I forget, hmm, what did I, oh, was it for the reset? No, it's not. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later. Or maybe I just needed spares. Uh, what is this? Ah, more MOSFET. This one is the P uh, MOSFET, uh, P channel. This model is the IPP80P03P4. Oh, I need glasses. Well, I have glasses. They need to be better. <clears throat> All right, what's in there? Compact flash memory card connectors. Uh -huh. 
I bought two, did I? Yeah, I bought two, interesting. Another box. Ah, oscillators. It would be the 14 megahertz. Uh, oscillator. Uh, well, 14 point, uh, let's see, I have it somewhere. 14.7456, so when divided, it'll be perfect for the SIO. I've got here, oh yeah, I have some uh, sockets for uh, oscillators, especially, you, especially made for oscillators, I don't know if you can see it. It's interesting, looks nice. Next in the back, ah yes, I needed some decoupling um, capacitors, so there we are. More chips, dual with clear reset. Oh, it's D, uh, D flip flops, 74 HC74s. Always practical to have D flip flops. And another big, huge quantity of electrolytic capacitors. They were cheap, 100 were cheap. Uh, yeah, there are Panasonic aluminum electrolytic capacitors and they are, oh, it doesn't say the value on the paper. Uh, if I, yeah, 10 microfarads. Perfect for, um, not smoothing, but when you need to have large capacitors strewn away on the board. All right, so that's basically it. I have more stuff, but one thing I wanted to talk to you about is what am I gonna do with this Z80, that's Canadian, Z80 uh, is the, uh, how I'm going to um, uh, do the format. Is it going to be a single board computer? Is it gonna be stacked? But I figured I have a lot of these card edge connectors and they are exactly the same as um, uh, the IBM PCXT connectors. So the, the 62 position, 31 on each side. And uh, I want to design a backplane with eight of those. I purchased those from a um, local electronics store. And they had a lot of them. They were really cheap, like, I don't know, $1.50 each. And I probably have something like 10. So no, more than that. 16, I think, or 20. I think I can buy more, just in case. Uh, but it's actually cheaper there than it was to buy them new. But first, we have to start somewhere. So let's test the CPU in the next episode. Please help support this channel by subscribing and liking this video. Thank you, and see you next time.